uh, City Attorney, did you have anything you wanted to report? Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. City Council is in closed session this evening on public employee appointments. City Manager, there's no reportable action, and the Council will be reconvening on this item at the end of the open session. Okay. Thank you. We will now call the regular City Council meeting to order at 7 p.m. tonight. If I could have the roll call, please. Council Members Payne? Here. Claire? Here. Payne? Here. Meredith? Here. Shelton? Here. And Don, I believe you're in beautiful downtown uh, Southern California someplace? I sure am. The weather's probably great down there. It is absolutely gorgeous, okay. and uh, uh, you couldn't ask for better, let me tell you. All right, good. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Any uh, public comment? Wait a minute. I'm on the wrong item. <laughs> Hold on. I'm I still unclosed. I know. Okay, Liz, I'll give you that one. If I could just ask everyone to stand for a moment of silence and remain standing for the uh, flag salute. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if we could have the video statement, please. This meeting of the Galt City Council is being videotaped in its entirety and will be cable cast with that interruption on Metro Cable 14, the Government Affairs Channel on the Comcast and SureWest cable systems. Tonight's meeting can be seen on Channel 14 and will also be webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv this Friday and Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Tonight's meeting can also be seen via live video streaming on the city's website at www.ci.galt.ca.us. A VHS copy is also available for checkout from any library branch. Members of the audience wishing to address council should fill out a speaker identification form and give it to the clerk. Please speak into the microphone when addressing council and state your name for the record. Are there any agenda approval additions and or deletions tonight? Council? I did have one item under my comments, which is the uh, recognition certificates. I would like to do that under presentations right after the uh, consent agenda items. No other items? We'll move to <coughs> any public comments. Under Government Code Section 54954.3, Members of the audience may address the council on any item of interest to the public or on any agenda item before or during consideration of the item. Please fill out a speaker sheet located on the table inside the entrances to the council chambers and forward the completed speaker sheet to the city clerk prior to addressing the council. We request that you state whether you live within the Galt city limits or the county area. A maximum of five minutes is allowed for each speaker. Dave Dahlgren. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Dave Dalton, resident of Galt, 17 years, and glad of it. I just wanted to uh, say a thank you for, to anyone or all who organized the Shred Hazardous event last Saturday. I never found anything so easy. It was faster for me than driving through the local McDonald's to get a hamburger. I mean, I was in and out of there, and I had two things to drop off. How it turned out was I entered the lot of 10 minutes to 9, the gates opened up. My car was already, you know, loaded up from the night before. I planned ahead. This nice lady directed sh shred to the left, or I mean shred uh, to the right, or hazardous to the left. Got in line, went down there. I didn't have to get out of my car. Everybody did everything for me. And then I had to go out the gate and come back through the line again to take care of the shred side and go to my right side. And here's Liz there, I took the bag out of my car, and I was home within. I left my house at 10 minutes to 9 in the morning, got back at 10 after 9. Wow. That's how quick it went for me. 
and I sure want to appreciate this service. I mean, there is no reason to me with service like this provided by the city that anyone should have to dump this on the side of the road and make a mess. You know, not only you're you're getting rid of things you don't need, but you're doing it right, and you're not polluting anything, and it's just a real great deal. So my sincere thanks to everyone involved in this. I mean, it was terrific. Okay, thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Al Baldwin. And while Mr. Baldwin is coming up, maybe I can kind of tag on to that. Um, thanks to Jennifer Cannell for the hazardous waste. She coordinated that and our shredded event. I think they were both a huge success this year. We had a lot of cars, a lot of hazardous waste, a lot of shredding. So we'll hopefully do it again in the spring around April. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Baldwin. Al Baldwin, a very concerned citizen of Gall. I tried to prove the character when I'm around people in Galt. I do my best, and I'll tell you what, Galt's growing in uh, more ways than you think. Not necessarily with people, but in character and organization and in, in things like shredding, it's going so well now. Everything is just coming together. The one thing I'd like to uh, ask is, and Don's not here, but he can still hear me, I'm sure, I've had a few people where I live, they want to know about the mobile home park ordinance, and I would suggest maybe if you could, Don or Andrew, I know you guys have been working on it, uh, to make a 10 bullet brief description of what you really want. None of them, they don't just, they don't, even though it was in the paper, they still don't understand it. It's just a very brief description, maybe like I say, 10 bullets, explaining what you want, what, what you're after what you'd like to have done, uh, what you'd like the owners to do or something. Uh, it's just total confusion. It's been almost two years. So if you, somebody could maybe come up with something like that, just a brief description, uh, I would appreciate it, and I'm sure they will too. And you don't have to make up 100 copies or anything. Uh, just make up a, a few for me, and I'll post them, and uh, I'll even go around the other parks if you want me to. You don't even have to. I'll do it anyway and uh, post it on their bulletin boards and let them know. They, they, there's people that want to know what this thing is all about. It was in the paper and that made it even more so. So it uh, didn't explain it to them as clear as they would like it. Al, we can, we can put something together for you. Yeah, I mean, it, it's we'll not put, just We'll me. put something together before the next meeting. And I'll um, get it over to you a little bit more detail, maybe give you a better uh, a uh, better description of what really we're trying to accomplish and what we're looking at at this point, okay? Well, I appreciate it, and so okay. will they. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for bringing it to our attention. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Al. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 And we will move to information consent calendar. If you could read the six items, please. Sure. Um, six items. Number one, approval of the minutes of the special and regular meetings of October 6, 2009. Number two, approval of the City of Galt Warrants. Number three, uh, waiver for usage of Littleton Center for the Thanksgiving Baskets 2009. Number four, health benefits renewal for 2009-2010. Number five, appropriation of Measure R funding for patrol vehicle. And number six, transfer, transfer of salary savings into capital for police vehicle replacement. Okay, Council, any discussions or is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. To approve and seconded. Any further comments? None. Call for the vote. Aye. 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 Okay. Now we have some people in the community that uh, I believe need to be recognized. And one person I would like to ask is if she would accompany me at the podium over here is Evelyn Moore, which is our chairperson of our beautification committee. And I don't know if there was any other members. I didn't want to leave them out. So Evelyn, I understand there was a big project that happened. We have several people in the community and uh, this certificate is acknowledging the individuals, your achievement, your contribution to the Galt Post Office Landscaping and Improvement Project. It is through active participation of members of the community and yourself that we can make Galt a better place. 
I uh, greatly appreciate what you've done. The Gulf City Council and the community would like to thank you. The first individual I'd like to ask to come forward is Mandy Gardner, which is the teacher. She is the teacher. Unfortunately, some of the students have been staying at home with the uh, flu bus, and the same applies to the, the committee, the beautification committee. We've had one member to undergo surgery and another one with uh, family illness. And this project that the students undertook during the summer wouldn't have taken place without postmaster and his assistant, Gary and uh, Bill, come forward. Without them volunteering uh, their space at the post office, uh, uh, the project couldn't have taken place. So the students, their last week of school, planted uh, flowers. And that was really nice, beautifying the city. And I want to thank Bill and uh, Gary for their uh, support with our project and our memorial site and all, and thanks for maintaining the uh, landscaping. It looks very nice. Okay. Okay, I want to give a t-shirt to... And who is the other? Yeah, the man that showed up. Do we introduce him? Brandon. Thanks for coming out tonight. I really appreciate it and all your help on the committee. One more public speaker. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Don Meyer. I'm the uh, new, newly appointed chief probation officer of Sacramento County. Probably the first chief ever to been to Gulf uh, City Council. So I'm, I'm rather proud of that. Um, I'm just here to introduce myself and uh, we work occasionally with uh, Bill, I can't pronounce his last name, and we were doing some help or gave him some help on a homicide case recently. Uh, we have a number of probationers down here. So we we don't have the number of POs that we need, but nonetheless we were we were down in this area when that particular crime occurred. So I wanted to give you my card, and uh, I've been in the business since September 15, 1966, probably before some of you were born. Uh, and I like to collaborate, so if you have my card and something comes up, please give me a call because uh, I want to be part of the entire county, not just the city of Sacramento. And what can we do to help? Well, I think um, in time I might talk to your city manager and stuff about uh, maybe some collaborations or some uh, some ways to get some evidence-based programs down here that's uh, partially funded by the city so that we have uh, better luck uh, re reducing recidivism. So. Great. Has the, uh, the county budget dramatically reduced the uh, ability of your office to perform its duty to the yes. community. Yeah, we uh, lost 153 
probation officers and close two institutions. Um, it, it's been the worst that I've seen in 40 plus years. Prop 13 I thought was bad, but it pales in comparison to this. So, and next year it may not be any better. So we'll be a downsized department. So. All right. Well, thank you for the introduction today. Yeah. Thanks for thank you. By. Thank you. my card. Back to work. Okay, next item. Um, do you have any communications? Any communications? Sorry. Okay. Were there any communications from anyone? Council? Staff? None? Okay. Okay, that takes us to ordinances. <coughs> Proposed ordinance amending the title of Chapter 9.12 of the Galt Municipal Code and amending Section 9.12.2. 025 of the Municipal Code pertaining to the curfew at City Parks. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to do the presentation on uh, this particular item. Okay. And uh, what the code amendment before you provides is it provides a little bit more flexibility to the uh, City Council as it relates to setting closing hours within your parks. What the current ordinance uh, currently provides is that all parks close at 10 p.m. and uh, the Parks and Rec Director and the Police Chief have uh, both seen a need for more flexibility in closing hours at certain parks where um, there's been a, a, a gathering of folks that are involved in an activity that uh, is not is not encouraged and so on. I've seen my tennis game you're saying. Uh, and so on, on those particular parks, what they, uh, what they wanted to do is to have the flexibility to come back to the council and ask for a dusk closing subject to posting. So what the ordinance amendment before you tonight uh, would do, it would not establish a closing at dusk for any parks, but it would enable uh, the council to establish that by resolution at any park in the future. So unless uh, uh, Boyce has some additional comments or you have any questions. I, I would just like to add it's very similar to the ordinance uh, regarding consumption of alcoholic beverages uh, within our uh, parks here in the community. And with that is that the city council by resolution can prohibit consumption of alcohol at specific parks. Presently we have Meadowview Park, Harvey Park, Shibola Park, and Roundstone Park, which are uh, prohibitive of consumption of alcoholic beverages. Are you thinking, boys, that those are the same parts that we would... Uh, uh, basically, uh, for my discussions with the police chief, uh, what I'll be coming back to council if uh, the council does adopt this ordinance in the near future is that it would be Lions Oak Park and Harvey Park, with the exception of if there's scheduled activities, baseball games at Harvey, then it would not be uh, related to. Okay. So the tennis courts will stay open? Yes. All right. <laughs> uh, boys, have you in any way um, reached out to the, to the neighborhood to get any input in those areas where those... Well, uh, how this was actually generated, the, the uh, chief approached me that he was getting phone calls from residents nearby Lions Oak Park. That's what initiated this whole uh, okay. amendment to the ordinance. Okay. No further questions? Okay. Comments? Uh, Mr. Mayor, so af after public comment, if there's no questions, the recommendation is to conduct the uh, first reading, or conduct the introduction and wait first reading. Any public comment? None? There is none. I'll recommend we go with staff's recommendation. Okay. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? <coughs> Questions? None? Call for the vote. Aye. 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 Okay. Next item, please. Proposed ordinance amending section 
14.10.100 of the Galt Municipal Code pertaining to maintenance of sanitary sewer connections. Uh, Mr. Parent Council Members, I'm going to take that one as well. Uh, we have provisions currently in the Municipal Code that allow the city to undertake summary abatement when we are presented with a situation that's an imminent risk to the public health, safety, or welfare. Uh, one of the areas where we have found we do not have the ability to undertake summary abatement is in the area where a sewer lateral that is on private property is clogged and we're unable to get a response from the owner of the property. This is a part of the sewer system that it is the responsibility of the private property owner to maintain. Um, we've recently had an example where uh, we were unable to contact a homeowner uh, after the uh, the clog was discovered and it, it took some time to, uh, to get a response and I don't think that the uh, um, any of the waterways were in jeopardy, but uh, what we what the city did do is we uh, put sandbags around the perimeter of the property in order to contain the spill. If that was not an adequate uh, remedy, we think that it would be beneficial to have the ability to go onto private property using the summary abatement process and undertake the uh, to the removal of the clog in the uh, sewer lateral. If we did go on to private property and incur cost, we would handle it the way we do any summary abatement on private property. Uh, we would attempt to notify the owner. If we could not contact them, we would go on, we would do the repair, and then we would uh, collect that charge from the homeowner uh, for the cost of the, of the city service. Um, so unless the uh, Public Works Director has any additional comments uh, or the Council has any comments, my recommendation is to take public testimony, introduce the ordinance and wait first reading. I would like to add, this, it's still our intent to have property owners maintain their laterals for clogs whenever we can. And we know, they typically notify us, we verify that it's in their lateral, not in the main line, and then attempt to notify the owners. This just gives us the ability if you go on private property, remedy the situation, and to recoup the costs that we uh, would incur in doing so. This just provides also clear direction to staff on what we can and cannot do. Do you ever run into any dispute as to really where the the problem is? Very rarely. It's, it's pretty clear. We can look at the main line. You see no water standing in the main line. Uh, that means it's in the lateral somewhere. Uh, it's like very rare that there's an issue. It seemed like we did have an incident on on Oak, or down from the Ray House, where the, um, do you remember the one I'm talking about? Were they Probably, it's the, where the duplex was flooded? Yeah. Okay, it's not, it's, it's not to say that it doesn't happen. In those cases, it's clearly the city's responsibility to go out and clean the main line. It's far more prevalent where we have a lateral that gets plugged relative to any cause, diapers, uh, tree roots, where it's the homeowner's responsibility. This last particular instance, the tenant was there, was very much aware of the problem. They're the ones that called us, but we cannot get a hold of the owner. And the tenant wasn't said, it's not my problem, it's the owner's problem. So they were not going to do anything to fix it. And so right now the code says we don't go on private property to fix it. In this particular case, we have a responsibility to protect the public right away, and that's why we put sandbags up. And then this will get all surprised. If that doesn't work, then there's not much else we can do unless we amend the ordinance. So you recommend that we do this? I think that the other thing to, to weigh in this is that um, if the, there, there are times when there's a dispute as to what the cause of the clog is. But if the clog is not cleared um, and we look at what the uh, potential ramifications are of a sewer spill that continues for a long duration and if it does, in fact, flow into the uh, the gutters and then down the the uh, drainage inlets, then we take a situation that can be very well contained, and then we can dispute and resolve a fairly minor issue, as opposed to make, allowing it to 
become a much larger issue because we couldn't resolve an issue of responsibility at the front end. So there's going to have to be some discretion utilized as to when it's appropriate and the situation warrants going onto private property and that's something that we, we do only when we do in fact believe that there is an imminent risk to the public safety or health. And under that scenario, it's far better to go onto the property, address the problem, incur the minimal cost, and then deal with uh, any minor uh, disputes after the fact. Whenever we go onto someone's property and do some reabatement, there is an opportunity for them to have a post-abatement hearing after the, the uh, situation is corrected. So they would have an opportunity um, to see the evidence that we had collected of the need to do summary abatement and to present their situation or, th or their information before we levy the charge. Now, I think this is a good idea, but if I remember that uh, situation, it turned out that it, w it was a health problem for a bit before we could decide who was, who was responsible for it. I think this is a good thing to do. In that particular case, it was very clear that the problem was in the city's main line. You can open the manhole up and you can actually see water in a sewage in one manhole. You go to the next one downstream and there's, there is no water, so it's obviously plugged somewhere in between. You do the same thing. You look at the, the clean out and you see there's water in the clean out or in the bathtub or in the showers where it usually comes up first in the house if it doesn't come out of clean out. You look at the next downstream manhole from the house and if it's open, plug it somewhere in the main line. So it, it, you, unless it happens to be right at the Y work, then it's, you, you really can't tell. You, that's really not a problem. Well, you know, we'd like to avoid problems with the citizens, but I think in this case it's more important that we uh, consider the health needs of the community. So I think it's a good thing. Hopefully we won't run into problems. Okay. I'll move uh, we adopt staff's recommendation. One second. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Was there any public testimony on this item? I don't know. Okay. Any comments from the public? Any testimony? No. I will move for the motion. Again, I'll move staff's recommendation. Second again. Second. Any further comments or discussion? None. We'll call for the vote. Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> Next item, please. Okay, City Attorney's Office, City Council Procedural Guidelines, Resolution, and Ordinance. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, I know you're all excited that the City Council Procedural Guidelines are back for, <laughs> for uh, consideration. I know it's no easy task to go through uh, this particular document. Um, I had sent this out a few weeks ago and um, did not get any new issues uh, brought to my attention. Um, I did outline in the staff report that there were uh, four items that I think were brought up at the uh, last city council meeting at which this item was discussed. And then there was one additional item I wanted to, to bring to your attention tonight as well. So looking on the, um, the second page of the staff report, uh, the items that I am aware of are whether or not the mayor should serve for a one-year term, um, what it currently provides is that it's typically a two-year term unless removed by the council. Uh, the second issue deals with whether council members may present certificates at city council meetings and or special events. Uh, item C was whether members of boards, commissions, and committees should serve at the pleasure of the city council or the appointing council member. Uh, the way that it uh, typically works is that whenever a individual member has an appointment, they make that appointment. What the rules as drafted provide is that after the appointment, the member would serve at the pleasure of the city council, so it would take the majority of the council to, uh, to remove that, that member of the board commissioner committee. Uh, item D is whether city council members should refrain <coughs> from meeting with parties involved in litigation or negotiations uh, with the city. And really what, what that gets into is uh, what we call ex parte contacts. And there is currently a, a limitation on an ex parte contacts 
whenever an item is coming before the council that is going to be a quasi-judicial proceeding, such as an appeal of a uh, issuance or denial of a permit. Uh, the last item that um, the Vice Mayor brought to my attention right before the meeting, which is an excellent catch, is there is an inconsistency in the rules as it relates to um, the votes required by certain items of the, of the City Council. If you go to 1.21, the second sentence in that section says the city policy, that city policy shall be established by a majority vote of the full City Council. So the implication is that on any policy matter, which essentially be any ordinance, most resolutions, except for maybe resolutions approving contracts, um, it would require a full vote or a majority vote to the full council. But if you go to section 4.8.1, it says a majority of all, of all members constitute a quorum. It goes on to say that a simple majority of the members present may take action or adopt ordinances or resolutions. So this would seem to contradict the uh, issue relating to policy matters. How it would work with a simple majority is if you had three members present that would establish your quorum, then two members of that quorum could in fact conduct first reading or adopt an ordinance under uh, 4.8.1. So I think we need to have some discussion on which, uh, which approach or a hybrid of, of those two items the council is, is comfortable with. Um, there was a lot of testimony at the last meeting on section 4.75 relating to uh, public testimony. And I have tried to um, tone that down a bit in order to uh, accommodate the comments that were heard at the last meeting, uh, but you may want to focus your attention on that section as well. And with those comments, I'd be happy to respond to any questions you may have. Comments by council? Barbara? Sorry. Um, well, regarding the last, well, next to last issue that you brought up about the, whether it's a majority of the full council or if it's a majority of the council present, what have other cities done? Um, I, th I, think it's, I think there's a wide range, but I would say that probably the predominant approach is that on, on policy matters and on ordinances, it's a majority of the full body. And then on, uh, on lesser matters, such as the approval of, of contracts, that a simple majority uh, would be appropriate. Would there ever be a need for an emergency provision? You may, would, this may be reaching out there, but right now there's a lot of concern about the flu. So what happens if we only have three members here and we, we need to take some action on something? Mm -hmm. Well, if, for example, if you had a if you had an across the board rule that you needed a majority vote of the full body and you only had three members, then you would you would need all three members to be in support of that measure. And I guess my question is: Is there a possibility of, of an action that can be taken in need of an emergency? If um, that would be well, we certainly we certainly could uh, write in a provision that unless there is an urgent need to act that uh, ordinances and policies re would require a majority vote of the full body. Is that something that you could see we should, you know, be thinking ahead on or do you not see that as a problem? Typically when there's an emergency situation, um, it's not too difficult for everybody to see that emergency and to, and to get a, uh, a either majority vote of the full body or certainly the uh, three-fifths. And really in the city council, city manager form of government, the city manager would be taking care of uh, issues that arise during an emergency. I mean, we're just, our body is here to 
provide legislative direction. You know, we're not here to manage emergencies that take place here in the city. Yeah. The only the only time when uh, the city council is usually called upon to act is a declaration of uh, declaring the city a disaster area for uh, funding. Um, if there's public unrest, sometimes to establish, uh, adopt an ordinance establishing a curfew. Those would be the types of items that would come before you in an emergency situation. And as I indicated, um, usually when a city's facing that, it's there's not much discussion of the issue. My only thought would be, and I don't know that it helped much, but I can recall times when there were very few city council members. Um, we were down to three, right, for a period of time. And there were times when only two were even here. Um, so I don't know if we could put a provision in that if two consecutive meetings failed to have more than three. I mean, you know, some, I don't know what the language would be, but if you got into that situation, um, and, and yet I, I agree, what are the odds that during, say, a 30 day period, something like that would come up? But I, I'm just trying to think of the, the converse of that by not allowing yourself any flexibility. If you had some situation, then you're out of luck because you don't even have enough people to change your own policy to allow you to take action. But it would be a pretty extreme case. The only reason I say is many of us could probably remember about eight, nine years ago, we weren't even sure we'd have three council members and we didn't know how they were going to conduct the business of the city and one or two of those meetings were pretty awkward, shall we say. I was trying to remember if there was something in here if there if there weren't enough members that the the city clerk would be allowed to vote. Or, no, we would <laughs> never allow that. No, we. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, what? You know, what they, they, what uh, what's provided is that is yeah, if there's not a quorum, then the the city clerk has the authority to uh, continue the matters to the next regular meeting. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> nope, no. Don? Yeah, I'm okay. I have to agree with Daryl. I think he brought up a good point. Andrew? Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring up the same issues that I had the last time we looked at this. Uh, section 1.3.1. I would still like to see us uh, mandate here in the council procedures that the mayor serves a one-year term. We can leave the language in there that no city council member may serve consecutive terms as mayor. I'm fine with that. Section 1.4.4 reads, proclamation shall be adopted by the city council and signed by the mayor. Council members may individually sign and present certificates at special events they attend but may not present individual certificates during the city council meeting. I'd like to strike that entire last sentence and just leave 1.4.4 to read, proclamation shall be adopted by the city council and signed by the mayor. And then section 1.6.8, which uh, Steve also addressed already. Board and commission members serve at the pleasure of the city council and may be removed at any time by a majority vote of the city council. Board and commission members may resign at any time by submitting a written request to the city clerk. Resignations are effective upon submittal. Again, I'd I would like this section of the procedure guidelines to uh, read, board and commission members shall serve at the pleasure of the appointing city council member and may be removed at any time by the appointing city council member, not the entire city council or a majority vote of the council. I just it doesn't seem right to me that you can have a council that would be split on an issue like three to two and uh, the planning commission might provide guidance on that issue to the entire city council. You're creating an atmosphere where the city council could stack the planning commission so that it, if, if one of the members of the planning commission voted in opposition to what the majority of the city council wanted, 
they can simply remove that member and force the council member to choose somebody else. It just doesn't seem right to me. We appoint these members to serve on these commissions. We should serve, be the ones that serve at will for you that for us. Who, or whoever appointed them. I, I think I have to agree with you on that because the other side of that coin is if you had a majority of the council that didn't like council mem uh, not council but a planning commission member right. Commission. Right. the majority could uh, dismiss the appointees I, I kind of agree with you on that Andrew and uh, what about the other issues section 1.3.1 the uh, mayor serves a one-year term and 1.4.4 which would essentially allow all members of the city council to present certificates at a city council meeting. On the mayor one, I really think a two-year term is more productive for both the individual, for the city, and for the region, if you will. Um, I was in Washington, D.C. two weeks ago, and people there are still calling me mayor because they just got to see me a lot, that's all. Um, but even here in the region, and I think by the time you become mayor, get used to the role, if you will. The staff gets used to whether you want to have pre-council meetings on Mondays or Tuesdays and all the rest. By the time everybody kind of settles into their most productive, efficient groove, then you're done and somebody else starts it and you kind of do the whole thing all over. As well as regionally, once people realize that who the mayor of your city is currently at governmental affairs and other things. So I don't think it's a life or death thing. I just think that that's the most efficient and most productive for both, as I say, the, the individual doing it. If somebody doesn't want to, because we've already had folks serve less than the year, I think they can volunteer to. But I think for those who want to do a two-year, I think it's just more productive. Are we one of the only cities left in Sacramento County? where the mayor serves a two-year term? We might be. I think we... I don't know, but... We're one of, if not the only, city left in Sacramento County. So I think the region as a whole is pretty uh, used to this type of a situation. You know, I don't, I don't think it's stepping outside of the box too much. No, I don't, like I said, I don't think it's out of the box. I just, having done it, and I know others have, um, I just think it's more, more productive. I think, a, I think a year is reasonable because I think if you've already sat on the council, in most cases when you become mayor, you have. It's just a step away. You're, you know, it's, 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 you're just basically you're moving from one seat to the other and you're taking out a few additional ceremonies, et cetera. Um, I like the idea of a year. I think it gives a chance for anybody who's on council an opportunity to sit in that seat and experience it. So I think the transition, I think, you know, for example, from Randy going from council member to mayor, uh, the transition is reasonable. It's you know they're not going to be caught off guard with anything. It's you you've already sat there for a reasonable period of time. You've got the experience and you understand what the you know what the job expectations are. So I would support Andrew on that uh, on that issue there. And uh, if you want to discuss that some more, I'll hold on. But I, I want to go over a couple of the other issues as well. Or maybe we can we should get a consent. Do one at a time. Or yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to bring up that we actually did a survey. Uh, June 10th, 2009, and which cities uh, have a two-year term and which cities have a one-year. And reviewing that, it's kind of half and half. So and I think it's pretty much whatever we decide we want to do here. I have it if you'd like to look at it. Oh, it's okay. Okay. I think we all had a copy of this at one time. We so. do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you have consensus, yay or nay? Well, you don't have my consensus. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm trying honestly not to take this personally. I mean, uh, you guys honored me when I got reelected to ask me to be mayor for, which was my understanding of two years. And to me, it just uh, kind of rubs me the wrong way that uh, 10 years into being mayor and if I vote yes to move it to one year, I'm kind of essentially, I'm saying, and you guys may not agree with me, but I'm kind of saying to myself, well, Randy, I don't think really you're doing a good job. So, uh, I don't, Honestly, Randy, I don't think it means that at all. Uh, I, 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 well, I, all I think it means simply is that uh, through the rotation process, at least, it will give everybody, whoever sits on the council, 
an opportunity to be mayor. I don't think it really, it's not going to judge you anymore. It's going to judge the next person or the person after that. So, I, you know, I would, I would hope you wouldn't feel that way yeah. myself. Well, and I'll clarify a little bit. Yeah. I was, uh, I was blowing this trumpet when you weren't sitting up here on the city council mayor. Um, you know, I, w I was pretty clear about this from day one, that I, I thought this should be a rotating position. When we made Tim the mayor, you know, that, that was my understanding. And when I assumed the responsibility, that was my understanding as well. So it has nothing to do with, uh, with the job that you're performing. It's just my philosophical sure. belief that it should be a one-year rotating term. Well, let's just put it this way, I think will agree that we disagree because I believe that whether it be any one of the other four council members that was council and became the mayor, if you had the understanding that it was for two years, then fine. Uh, if it takes, like Daryl has already said, he's been mayor once already, but it takes you about 10 to 11 months to actually 100% determine not only what you're doing, but the smooth transition of all the other staff and the department heads, and to set goals and objectives. I think we've strived and we've come a long way. I believe that it should be remain as two years. I have some other comments that I was going to bring up at uh, my closing remarks, and I think maybe it might be appropriate to bring it up now and. The attorney can tell me if, to shut up if he wants to, but I'll be polite. Uh, I believe that our city, and I will ask staff, to look into something to the effect that uh, I'll just propose a question. Uh, either put together something like a measure by council. And the question is, shall the mayor be elected at large to serve for four years? I know that not everyone's going to agree with me. We have said from time to time repeatedly, not only this council, but other council members in the past, that we always want the members of the public to be involved as much as possible into the community and to us and to talk with us, elected officials. It gets the voters involved. They make the decision. But I will ask that question again at my closing remarks to ask staff look at something like that. I'd like to as make far as the mayor, I believe that it should be mayor and vice mayor, because it's not just the mayor, it affects the mayor and the vice mayor, that it should remain presently for two years. I'd like to make a suggestion. Um, I, I think that the mayor should be a rotating position. We all have equal power as far as voting. However, I'm wondering if it, we could set it up where we allow the current mayor to serve his two years and then make the switch after that to one year, as you had suggested, because he is in the middle of serving what he thought was two years, and uh, I can understand where he's coming from, and, and, I, and I do agree that I like the idea of the one-year term rotating. So would this work to solve everything, or well, what's your thought? I, I guess it does. I mean, my goal is to implement this policy for the future. Um, I, I just, I really fear that we're already getting into a situation where uh, people expect that they should be the mayor, and I just I'll I'll get over that because we're going to be adopting this legislation to make sure that it doesn't happen in the future. But well, it's still bothersome. But yeah, I agree. Any other comments by council? So is there, Mr. Mayor, is, is there a consensus then to change the provision to provide that uh, the current mayor would complete the two-year term and thereafter be one-year term for mayor and vice mayor? That's what I would recommend. I agree. So there has been a second and a first. And, you know, I forgot. I believe there is somebody that wanted to speak. There is. <laughs> on this issue in general. Do you want him to put now? Al Baldwin? Al Baldwin, live in golf. Just three points because I only have five minutes and you've hashed it over quite a bit. But uh, on this, I would like, uh, if you want to, to turn to page five. It's uh, 
1.5.9, and it says all persons are eligible to serve on committees at the discretion of the City Council, regardless of citizenship, residency, or voter registration status. And uh, maybe I need some explanation on citizenship. You mean you can have someone that just moved here from France or somewhere and, and can get on this and not even a citizen, is that correct? What's that, would you repeat that? It's uh, 1.5.9. It's on page five. Got it, thank you. So that was one of the questions I'd have. <laughs> Maybe you could maybe clarify it with me sometime. <laughs> and the uh, next one is the uh, contact and conduct of members. It's 3.3, uh, but it's 3.3.1, and that's on uh, page eight. It says uh, council members shall refrain from abusive conduct, personal charges, or verbal attacks upon the character or motives of other members of the city council, boards, commissions, committees, staff, or the public. So there shouldn't be anything negative towards a public person that comes up here, maybe adjusting their character or something like that, unless it's very abusive. And I would suggest doing that in private if that was the case. But nevertheless, it, it's in there. And now maybe you can clarify it on that. And the third one, which is the last one, is on page 12, or 13, I'm sorry. And it's uh, communication from the public. It's 4.7.5. You may have discussed it a little bit here. The council shall discourage the making of belligerent, personal, slanderous, threatening, or abusive remarks during a city council meeting and further discourage any behavior which disrupts, disturbs, or otherwise impedes the orderly conduct of the city council meeting. And I thought that was in this before because I've been to many of these meetings and it's been very destructive and um, abusive and there's been, uh, in my opinion, attacks on council members. And I, maybe I'm not reading this correctly, maybe I'm missing something. But since I only have a certain amount of time, those were the three that uh, that I was concerned about. And I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware that someone from the public has some comment about this thing, because I do get up here once in a while. And uh, I would like to see, since I'm up here right now, and i got a little bit, since you're discussing the mayor, I'd like to see a minimum of two years if you're going to do anything. If you're going to go to the floor, that's fine. If they're going to be voted, that's fine. But I'd say minimum of two years. Daryl brought up a good point. People get used to seeing you, and you got to get used to that position because it's not just like another council member. It's, it's got a little more responsibility in certain areas. And your face becomes, oh, I guess, known by a lot of the people in the county around the area and when you go and speak to them or talk to them or they ask your comments can you come by and can you get on this committee uh, they would like to see you again on that committee possibly the following year and you have more information that maybe another person just getting on it for a year wouldn't even have for the first six months or a year uh, and it would give golf more of a, a uh, visual look at, at golf it's it's a mayor that's been here for at least two years i mean I, that's it, it's just something that would be good. It should be familiar with, with other people in other counties, other cities, um, different organizations. They refer to one person, just like Daryl says, they still think he's the mayor. They're not sure. Uh, it's just something that that's what I would suggest, and it's my personal opinion, and you can take it, and <laughs> you can do what you want to with it, but I wanted to make sure you at least had a couple of comments on this so you could talk about it, think about it, and maybe this won't be done tonight see this may have to go another couple of weeks because there's so much controversy tonight and uh, there might be more public input now after it's been coming out like this so you might have to put it off so I'd, I'd like this to be good because it's going to last a long time and uh, what you do tonight can affect future years thank you thank you yeah. Have have we had a lot of controversy tonight? Cause I, well, not tonight, but we yeah, haven't I didn't up and see down that. in the past. <laughs> last few meetings, I think, have gone pretty smoothly, last three or four. My comment earlier and uh, about the mayor, and obviously you guys can tell, and I'm not making an apology, but I want to point out if 
there was any one of you council members that were in towards the end of your first year, my feelings would be exactly the same. I just want to point that out to all of you, okay? If it was any one of you and you were in your 10th month and you were going on a two-year term and we were changing it, okay, I'm not in support of changing it. It could be the same. I will press on and I'll talk about it later at my closing remarks. So, so we have consensus on that one. What about item 1.4.4? Well, we get make sure what we're consensusing on. Well, yes. I think that uh, I think where we were is that there had been a motion and a second to have uh, the mayor finish out his current two-year term and then switch to a one-year term for the mayor and the vice mayor. That was. Uh, that was so is there unanimous support on that? Um, yeah, mine would be no. Mine would be no. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, Don. Yes, I support it. Okay. okay. See, item 1.4.4, which uh, referred to the presentation of certificates at city council meetings. Uh, I wanted to make a motion that we strike the last sentence. Um, I'd like to support you on that one too, Andrew. Uh, I, I think my point would be on this issue is uh, just that if you want to recognize somebody as an individual who's done something outstanding in the community and provide them a certificate, as a council member, because uh, uh, Barbara, you've done it many times, and uh, I think that if that's something you want to do, you should have a right to do it. Uh, I have no problem with the mayor being the master of ceremonies for the most part, but uh, when it comes to individuals or somebody that you've worked with closely in the community, I think it. Uh, I think. It, it, the council member who's worked with them, such as like Barbara has in the past with the individuals, it, it, you know, those people like to get those awards or they like to get those certificates from the people they've worked closest with. Nothing against who's the master of ceremonies or the mayor, but, you know, I think uh, Barbara or anybody else for that matter, uh, I think it's something dear to their heart and I think it's a personal thing and I think it's something they should be allowed to do. Outside of the certificates and that, I'd have no problem with it. I think it's fine, like it is or like he suggested. Striking the sentence? Yeah. Okay. I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. What did we say? I, I said I agree with you, basically. All right. Thank that we you. take out that last sentence and leave it. Okay. So we can strike that? That's my Please. agreement, my feeling on the issue. So we're going to distinguish a certificate from a proclamation. Certificates will not take a council action at all. They'll just be... I mean, they can, but they're not by definition a council action. Right. And the council member on their own can create and present certificates at city council meetings. At city council meetings. So the proclamation would come from the city council. Okay. So I'd like to make that motion. Okay. I'll second. Hi. Yep. Hi. 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 And then section 1.6.8, uh, which referred to the appointment removal of committee and board members. Yeah, I agree with that as well. Uh, I think once you've selected somebody, you should be, you know, they should be able to stay in place. Uh, it's kind of what uh, I guess maybe in this case it, it's it's kind of what uh, the mayor had said. You know, you you take this position of the seat. But the understanding you're going to be there for a certain length of time. So, and if somebody's appointed you and they're comfortable with you there, then they should be permitted to stay there. So my motion would be that in section 1.6.8 of the proposed council procedures, in the first, the first line, we would strike the word city council and insert the words appointing city council member. And then in the second line, where it reads, may be removed at any time, strike everything after that, which was by a majority vote of the city council, and insert the words, appointing city council member. Yeah. Okay. I would agree with that. That language uh, suit, Steve? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So that's my motion. I'll take it. Second. No further discussion. Okay. Vote. Oh. Vote. Oh. Yes. Yes. Was that a vote? Yes. 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 Okay. Couldn't quite hear it. Aye. 
Hi. Hi. So that, that addresses all of my issues, so I don't know if we're ready for a motion on the entire. I would like to touch on just one issue, if I could, the 3.3.1 that Al had brought up. I think you're going, in my opinion, you may get into a gray area. I feel that as a council member that if somebody comes in and makes some false accusations for which I know are inaccurate and it's a deliberate attempt on them to uh, put a blemish on me or, or make false accusations toward me, um, I probably will be somebody who will speak out. And if I call somebody a hypocrite or uh, a liar, I will do it with good reason and I will be able to back it up. So uh, if you're going to consider that as being uh, poor conduct of a member, I'm just, you know, I, you may find somewhere along the line that I'm just, I'm not going to tolerate it from certain people. So I will try to always refrain myself from uh, getting into that uh, situation, but I just happen to feel that if somebody's going to come in and lie as much as they have in the past and deliberately uh, mislead the public, that I'm going to be vocal about it. I just, and I think anybody you would do the same thing or you should. So I'll leave it at that. I would comment on that. I think that no one is saying that you can't uh, express your opinion and even defend yourself if need be. I think Ron, this is only saying that you do it in a mature, professional way. That's fine. Maybe we should talk about the, the other item that uh, Mr. Baldwin brought up, which was 1.5.9. All persons are eligible to serve on committees at the discretion of the City Council, regardless of citizenship, residency, or voter registration status. Is that legal? Um, yes, it is. And uh, actually, um, you'll note that there's no comment that in these rules as it relates to uh, boards or commissions, and there's also nothing in your your local ordinances that restrict board or commission membership. I think one of the important things is, is to recognize oftentimes the distinction between your committees and your boards and commissions. Your boards and commissions typically are, are obviously standing bodies. Usually you delegate a certain amount of decision-making authority to those bodies. While your committees can be standing, and, and we do have some standing committees within the city, um, Committees are oftentimes formed in order to assist the city council in the performance of one of their particular duties. A good example, I think, would be the, uh, the measure, measure A committee, where you have folks that are um, is it measure A or measure R. Measure R. R. Measure R sorry, okay. um, measure R committee, where folks uh, were appointed to that committee for a specific uh, purpose for a limited term and you might have been looking for folks that have particular talents to bring to the uh, the table and they may not be residents, they may not be voters, they may not be long-standing residents, um, but the council in its discretion may feel that they have something particular to offer to that committee. And um, I think the important point of 1.5.9 is the phrase at the discretion of the city council. So it's always uh, the council's called, depending upon the type of committee that's being formed, as to how you want to structure the membership of that particular committee. And when I looked at that, I honestly had a little bit of a gut reaction not in favor of it. And But then the more I thought of it, for example, at SACOG, one of the leading initiatives we're working on right now, having to do with planning and smart growth, we have a gentleman from England who's the leading authority pretty much recognized in the world on that. And as our as our country becomes more global, we're seeing more and more people, especially with our university systems, coming into this area for periods of time, uh, doctorates and various things that are doing special work. And now I don't know, frankly, how often the city of Galt will be bringing someone like that in here. But, but when I thought about it, the initial gut reaction I had, I realized that there may be expertise in people foreign exchange students, there's a variety of things that um, you may want to put them on a committee, but as you said, it's still up to the discretion. And, and I would add to that, we have an existing youth council where we have members, students that are certainly underage, that they're not eligible to vote, 
but they are a very active part of that committee. It's not a council, it's a committee. So we wouldn't want to, in my mind, we wouldn't want to restrict them from being on the committee because they can't vote. So I think, I'm, I think we're okay with I'm okay. I'm okay with leaving that as it is, but I understand also where um, Mr. Baldwin's coming from, especially regarding being a citizen of this country. I think we just take it a little bit further and we can see a positive reason why we wouldn't want to change it. So I'm okay with that. That's my, that's my, uh, I'll move then we leave the language as is. Second. Further discussion? Call for a vote. Aye. 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 All right. And if there's no further discussion on the ballot? Um, was there a, a resolution on the voting issue? Yeah. Whether it's right. council, full, a majority of a full council right. or a majority of the president. We didn't. Never ah, resolved right. that. We didn't. No. Uh, I like to say I, I can. I think think the odds are small because we get back to where we were. Yeah. I can I can go either way, whatever council is comfortable with. Yeah. I mean, my if I could make a recommendation sure. would be Please. that um, ordinances and uh, other policy matters be a majority of the full body, and that uh, your administrative items such as contracts um, be a a uh, simple majority, so basically majority of those present. I'm fine with that. Yeah. All right. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Further discussion? None? Call for vote. Aye. 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 Okay. Unless there's any other issues um, to resolve, what I'd like to do is clean this up and bring it back on consent. Um, that way everybody can see the uh, changes made. I'll do it in red line. And then if uh, if I got it right, then we can just vote it through on consent. But in the event I didn't, it gives us one more opportunity to uh, to correct it before it's done. If, if, all right. if I'd be all right with the council. Thank you for all the work. This has been a lot to do and good to have almost in place. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Next item, please. <coughs> Next item, the budget update, Mr. Fairman. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. My pleasure to present this budget update to you this evening. When we did the budget in the spring, we talked to the council about the need to bring periodic updates back to this body. Um, the, the, the budget was continuing to be in a state of flux, mostly from the state of California, but also certainly at a local level. And we wanted to not go a significant amount of time without bringing information back to the council and the community to let you know where we stood financially as a city and as a community. So what I'll do is I'll go through briefly some of the highlights of two, two different areas. One is uh, the first quarter of this current fiscal year and, and actually also how we ended last fiscal year compared to where we, where we um, budgeted because when we did the budget back in June, things were still estimates at that point now. Finance has just recently completed or mostly completed the audit, so we have the audited numbers now to take a look at to see where we, where we ended the year. And we looked primarily at two major funding sources for the city, which is our general fund and the Culture and Recreation Fund, 06 fund. These are ones that that have the greatest likelihood of fluctuations due to the economy as well as impacts from the state. Um, the other area that we obviously are concerned about and that has potential impacts from the economy are the impact developer impact fees and we looked at those and we actually came in a little bit better than what we thought we were going to at the end of last year so there's not, there weren't any really major fluctuation, fluctuations on the developer impact fees. So we're going to take a look quickly. The slide that you see up right now is general fund revenues. And these are the numbers from last fiscal year. You can see the, the budgeted amount in the first column. And then the next column is where we actually ended the fiscal year. Then you can see the variance, how close we were in our estimates. And a lot of them, we were very close. 
the the red or the minus numbers or ones where we were we we the revenue was a little bit less than what we thought it was going to be at the time we did the budget and the black numbers the positive numbers are those where revenue came in a little bit better than what we thought we were going to be and you, you can see the different categories up there property taxes we were off a little bit although when you consider you know 2.5 million dollar budget we were off by about 56 thousand dollars it's less than two percent of variance other taxes it's largely the largest category in this one is sales tax and again that one we were a little bit off but we were very close in those estimates less than one percent off from the budget estimates and you go down the the, the big one that kind of jumps out at you is the total from other agencies and the, there's a couple different things in there. One is motor vehicle taxes, and those fluctuate when they did the triple flip. Those now fluctuate with the property values, and so as the property values go down, we also see a reduction in the motor vehicle fees. Another one that's in there is um, CDBG funds, and this was just a project, really a project-related delay. We with the Lincoln Way parking lot project, which was primarily CDBG funded, that project got pushed over into the current fiscal year so the revenues didn't materialize last year like we thought we were. So you will see an increase in the revenues this year. There's an offsetting reduction in expenditures when we get to the expenditure side. So you'll see that, that that's really a, no net impact to the general fund balance. They just offset one another. Um, some of the other, the other categories, the, uh, the other major reduction that we saw was the category that's from use of money and, and property, and that's the interest earnings of the city. Yeah, we talked about that during the budget. The interest earnings were just down significantly, and they continue to, to go down. I think we're right around 1% return right now on all of our investments, which isn't very good. You compare that to where we've been in the past, but that's just the way the economy is and the, the opportunities that we have in there, uh, out there right now. And as our city treasurer always points out that uh, yield is not our number one thing and it's safety and security of our funds and so we continue to invest with that in mind and that uh, certainly safety and liquidity are more important than the yield that we receive. However, we do try to get as much yield as we can. So overall, we're down about 3%, about $250,000, but again, a large portion of that was the CDBG funds that really is just a, a carryover. Uh, so overall, we are. I'm happy, confident that these numbers were actually pretty close to the budget. That we're, we're, there's no major surprises here. We're off in a few categories, but nothing really um, drastic. We move over to the expenditure side, and you can look at the different operating departments. In this case, the the minus or the red are where we were under budget, and the black are, are situations where we were a little bit over budget. And you can see. Um, you know, for each of the departments, we were over or under in various amounts, but overall, as a whole, as a city for general funds, you can see I brushed through the uh, the, the black lines quick, and so I can get to all the red lines over here. You can see down at the bottom where the total savings was about $716,000 as a city. So this is largely a result of several different factors. One is continuing to have uh, fro frozen vacant positions in the city. That's a big chunk of the savings that we had there. And just uh, a, fr a frugality and a cost savings mentality among your city staff. I know everybody took it to heart when we've been talking and, and preaching over and over again the need and the drastic times that we're in now and the drastic measures that we may be facing in the future that everybody took that to heart and, and watched their budget very closely. And uh, we came in with significant savings in most of our departments and overall as a whole with some significant savings, about $716,000. Some of that is from the CDBG program, um, a couple hundred thousand dollars, So, but overall I'd say we at least came in about $500,000 under budget. So that's significant. That certainly offsets, more than offsets, the reduction in revenue that we saw. So overall as a city, we ended up the year a little bit better than what we told the council in June. So I'm happy to report that. Always better when we can report to you that we're a little bit better than what we thought, then that we're worse off than we thought. You look at look around us at the county and every time you turn around it's, oops, we missed it by another $50 million. And oops, we missed it by another in the states the same way. They keep missing it and they're missing it on the wrong side. Instead of you really have you know, cities come back and say, oh, we're a little bit better than what we thought. And so I'm happy to report that we are a little bit better than what we thought. It doesn't mean that we are 
out of the woods by any stretch, but it's, it's an acknowledgement to our staff of their hard work and um, the finance department's um, conservative nature and their revenue estimates and, and other things that we can report this to you this evening. Culture and Recreation Fund is the other significant uh, fund that we have in the city. And again, on the, on the revenue side, we're a little bit better than we, what we thought. We we're about $50,000 up on the revenue. This is largely a result of, of better times at the market. Ever since the first of the year, the numbers have been up uh, almost every month. When I look at the comparison, every month has been better than the year before. So, um, and it's continuing. We're, we're having a good fall so far. We had a good day today. Last week with the, with the storms, it was, uh, but, but the good thing about it is we had a good number of monthly. That had, we, I think we were still at 84, 86% last week, yeah. even though monthly. nobody was out there because everybody had signed up on the monthly basis, so we still received, you know, the revenue for those monthly income, for the monthly rentals. And today I think we're at 94%. We've been at rough, r averaging 94, 95%. Which is which is pretty good compared to last year. On Tuesdays, we were in the mid 80s, 80 percent. So we've seen a big up uptick there, and we're pleased with that. And so the revenues did come in better last year. And uh, on the expenditure side, again, we saw savings in the Culture and Recreation Fund. The Parks and Rec Department did a good job of managing their budget and coming in under the uh, the estimate at the time the budget was prepared, to the tune of about. Uh, $250,000 savings, which is about a 7%. The biggest chunk of the savings is a result of part-time salaries, um, either from positions being vacant, not filled, um, or just you know not our ability not to be able to hire people quickly enough. A lot of different reasons, but again, the the market staff and the landscape, the uh, the maintenance staff did a good job of. Yeah, that's the other thing. We did have savings. We we kept moving things from the landscape contract and doing more of the stuff in house. And um, our staff is doing a good job of managing the, those contracts right now. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's that is it for last fiscal year. I do want to touch on a few things for the first quarter of this fiscal year. It's, do you want to make a comment? Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the council recall. The we we adopted an agreement to provide personnel part-time salaries to continue to run some of the after-school programs for um, through the elementary school district. So that's what that is. As far as the first quarter this year, it's hard it's hard to gauge where you are after the first quarter because most of our major revenue sources don't come in yet. We haven't received any property taxes yet. We haven't received sales tax, and we, we have we've some, inf some information, but it's very limited. So it's difficult to get a good sense of how we're doing as a city. But we do know when looking at property tax, we have some assessed value information from the county that numbers continue to go down. More, more, more and more properties continue to be reassessed. There are homeowners, property owners that continue to um, petition to have their values reduced even further. So we are expecting to see continue a decline in property values into the near future. We budgeted, I believe, an 8% decline in property tax values in the current year budget. Right now, we're, we're recommending to hold that number where it is right now until we get more information. We may have to come back at some point in the future and adjust those estimates, but right now we think it's about as good, as, as good a guess as any as we're going to get, and the finance department feels that we shouldn't uh, you know, jump to make any drastic reductions until we start getting some of the numbers in. So right now it's about as good as num a number as any as we're going to receive. Uh, on the sales tax side, we we are a little bit better than we were the previous quarter. We were about 10% up from last quarter. So that's a that's a good sign. We have a few new stores open, a few new stores that are going to be open in the, in the near future. We're monitoring tractor supply and Rite Aid and some of the other new ones that are opening out there. But you compare the the current quarter to l the last last year at the same time, we're down about 24 percent, and that's a the biggest reason for that is because the um, price of fuel. Price of fuel, remember this time last year, was pretty high, and the city of Gauls, a lot of our sales tax comes from the sale of gasoline, and so when that fluctuates, so does our sales tax. So um, 
that's why we see not, not that, and we have seen reduction in some of our other stores too. But that's the biggest chunk is the is the sales tax on the gasoline that where we've seen that reduction. Uh, those are the biggest things that I wanted to highlight as far as the revenue goes on the general fund in the current quarter. Culture and recreation, as I mentioned, the market continues to do well, so we are up. We should be, if you look at just the a quarter, it's 25% of the year, we're about 28% in revenue for the, for the market and for culture and rec, so we're a little bit ahead of where we should be at this time of the year on the market, so we're hoping that the trend will continue. We'll continue to have good numbers out of the market and we'll end the year on a positive note, but there, right now there aren't any, any negative signs that we're going to have any kind of erosion in revenues from our culture and recreation programs, and most importantly, the market that's still holding strong. We're just going to continue to monitor it through the fall and through the winter, and then uh, if there's, you know, we see things happening, we may have to come back to the council for some adjustment of fees or other things to help the market like we did last year, and we think that that was one of the, the key reasons why we did have a, a positive and a strong winter is there were some you know, if you council members that can't, we adopted reduced rent for January and February, which kept a lot of our vendors there, and I think it created some goodwill with some of those vendors, and so we may look at that again depending on what the numbers look like as we head into the, the rainy seasons if we want to do that again. But right now we're going to kind of hold tight and hopefully the trends continue the way they are. But I, what we plan on doing is bringing information back to the council periodically, probably every quarter, with updated information as we start to get more sales tax, get more property tax, and certainly if we become aware of some major issues, we'll bring it back more quickly to the council as well. We won't wait for the quarter. But right now, um, th there's nothing in here that's ca causing great alarm other than con the continued need to be diligent in reducing our expenditures as much as we can, watching our budget. Each of our departments are closely monitoring and watching their budgets, and we'll continue to do that and bring any important information back to the council as that information may become available. So at this time, Again, I'd like to staff. I'd like to thank staff for all their hard work and council for its support of staff and our efforts to keep the balance, the budget balanced. And I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And and our finance director Inez Curio helps greatly in putting this report together. So if you have any specific questions, um, she is also available to answer those. Yes, I think Daryl does. Do you have a comment or question? Well, I I just wanted to congratulate you and Ted and the full staff and. Um, hopefully, maybe the newspaper will write, Galt may be the most fiscally run community in the region because uh, given all the events I attend, I haven't heard any other city that's even close to being this at par, if you will, and let alone being a little money ahead. And uh, so you guys have done one heck of a job, and uh, congratulations. And I hope the citizens, I hope the papers do report it. The citizens realize how well you're doing at watching the city's finances and keeping things in balance. And I mean, to be that close on target in such an unknown economy, uh, Federal Reserve Bank would be glad to hire you folks and have you run their budgets, let alone the state and the nation. So, good job. Jason, are we vulnerable from the state taking more from us, or what's going on there? Well, the, you know, they approved the prop. There's two things right now, Prop 1A, and because it's a securitization program, you have that on the council agenda tonight, about $350,000 right. they're going to take. We're going to be able to be made whole on that without any risk to us, so that's really not going to be a hit to us. The other big issue is the redevelopment funds. Right. They're right. coming in and trying to take about a million dollars from the city of Galt. It's about $2.1 billion statewide. There was just a lawsuit uh, filed. By the CRA, I think today or yep. yesterday. Yep. They won the last one. They won the last one, so we're optimistic that we'll win this one as well. But we're we're continuing to monitor that. Uh, the good thing about the the Prop 1A stuff is the state can't come back in and do that again. They have to wait. I think they can only do it twice every 10 years, and they have to wait before they pay back the first one before they do it again. Right. So we're protected for three years. <laughs> Right, 2013, they can't do the same thing they did to us this year. And I can find some other ways to take money, but this is the, they took the big chunk this year. What about grants, like COPs and some of those that we get revenue from? Do you feel like those are going to... They, they shifted the funding of COPs this year out of the general fund. They put it, I believe it's funded using um, motor vehicle fees. And so it's a little bit more protected than it has been in the past, which is, which is good news. Not to say they couldn't find some creative way to come and take our money, but, but right now, 
I think we're feeling a little bit more confident than we may have last year. And with the securitization program, the one of the one A, you know, it's really not that much of a hit for us. We're going to be able to get that money up front, and using the financing mechanisms available, it's 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 going to be transparent for the city. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Jason. Any other comments for Jason or questions, Don? No, I don't want to leave you out. Did an outstanding job, and I have to agree with Daryl. I think. Uh, Hopefully the newspaper will do a nice article because uh, every time you look in the paper, looking at other cities and the cuts and the layoffs and all, you know, all the hard steps they're having to take, we're, we've been a very, very fortunate up to this point so far that we've not had to do what they've had to do and, and had to make those tough decisions, and uh, I hope that will continue to be the case. So uh, good job, and I, you know, and I really appreciate the hard work everybody's done. Yeah, I did. Andrew, do you want to make another comment? I do. Thank sure. you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I want to thank staff for all of their hard work. Uh, I think Daryl touched on the fact that we were just extremely close to our uh, our budgeted numbers. I think that's a testament to the work that our, our staff does, especially in the finance department. One concern that I do have, and I voiced these when we adopted the budget, I really, I still don't believe that the 8% is an adequate uh, estimated figure for the reduction in property tax revenue. I got my property tax copy, the copy of the statement that they sent to my mortgage holder. My property tax went down by 33%. And I, I asked people in the neighborhood and theirs were similar. So I know that not every house is being reassessed, but I keep hearing from other elected officials in the region that other cities are hovering around 12 to 15% is what they're estimating. So I'm hoping that this doesn't come back to bite us in the next 12 months. Um, in regards to sales tax, I'm amazed that we've been able to stay, stay as close to our budgeted numbers as we have. Uh, I was disappointed to see some of our community members uh, did not attend tonight that had voiced concerns about vacated uh, commercial buildings in the past, like Mr. Smith and uh, Mr. Bruce. I heard this week that the yogurt shop in the Galt Shopping Center closed. I also heard that the Galt Frosty hasn't been open in the last two weeks. I don't know if that... It's open. It's open? Okay. And then Lamppost Pizza? Gone. Gone. I mean, it, it just seems like systematically our, our small businesses are just dropping off the, uh, the radar here in the city. And I hope it's not a trend that continues, but I, I really think that we should be anticipating it. I think there's going to be a, a major reduction in sales tax revenue over the next 12 months. And if we're not estimating it, it's going to catch us off guard. So I just, I really hope that that's not what takes place. Okay, just to reiterate, I, I appreciate Jason, Ted, staff, for you guys looking at the budget and also keeping council and the public informed. Thank you. Okay, next item, please. Okay. <coughs> The next item, Proposition 1A, Securitization Program. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. This evening, staff is recommending that Council approve various forms and related documents with respect to the sale of City of Galt's Prop 1A uh, from the state. By way of background, Prop 1A was approved by the voters in 2004 to ensure that property taxes and sales tax remained local. And um, this provision was actually suspended when the governor declared a fiscal emergency and it was um, supported by the legislature, two-thirds of the legislature, during the 2009-10 budget process. Um, at this point, the state will borrow 8% of our property taxes, which is approximately $355,000. Um, the state will be required to repay the city by June of 2013. They are required also to pay interest to the city. The Department of Finance has established that the interest rate will be at 2%. So in the staff report, I had presented that the legislature was looking at some cleanup language um, that actually has been approved. The governor actually signed the cleanup language yesterday. So the staff report as presented is accurate. The information as far as the cleanup language has already been approved and signed by the governor. The program itself will enable the city to sell our Prop 1A receivable to California communities. And they in turn will go ahead, purchase it, sell the bonds, we will receive, they will expect pricing to occur sometime next month. We will expect to receive our property taxes, our equivalent in two installments equal to the timing of the property tax borrowing. We'll receive it in January and in May. 
and we will receive 100%. The sponsor of the program is California Communities, and we are a member of this organization. It's um, a joint effort with um, CSAC and League of California Cities. We became a member when we did the same type of a receivable loan program with the motor vehicle in lieu back in 2005. So that was when we did the same thing. So um, there are no fees associated with being a member. A couple of the benefits of participating in the securitization program are we get immediate cash relief, so where the state will actually take the money away from us in. January and in May, we'll actually receive our payments from the bond sales as well during that same time period. Um, it will mitigate the 8%. Again, that amount is estimated to be $355,000. All of the costs of financing are borne, from, borne by the state of California. The city of Galt will not incur any costs um, for the bond sale. And finally, um, the city will not have any obligation with regard to payment of the bonds. An option that the city does have available is that we could not participate in the program and we could wait for the state to pay us the $355,000 in June of 2013. Um, but it is staff's recommendation that we, um, that council approve the various forms that are presented this evening and sell the, participate in the Prop 1A securitization program. So if council has any questions, I'd be more than glad to try to address those this evening. Um, so with that, I would ask for council's support of staff recommendation. Questions? Comments? Seems like a pretty cut and dry issue to me. No, I, yeah. Yeah, if I was going to bet on whether the state will pay back on time, not a good bet. <laughs> Might get an IOU. With that, I'll, I'll move staff's recommendation. Second. Any further discussions or comments? None? Call for the vote. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, we will adjourn and to the redevelopment agency. Roll call, please. Board members Payne. Here. Claire. Here. Payne. Here. Meredith. Here. Shelton. Here. Public comment. I have no speakers. Information consent agenda. We have two items. Would you read those, please? Sure. Number one, approval of the minutes of the meeting of October 6, 2009. And number two, approval of the redevelopment agency warrants. Any comments or discussion, or is there a motion? I'll move for adoption of the consent agenda. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussions, comments? None. We'll call for the vote. Aye. 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 Okay. Adjourn and reconvene to the Gulf City Council. City Clerk's report. Just a couple of items, a couple of reminders. On October 21st, tomorrow, there's a town hall meeting at 6 p.m. at the Littleton Community Center. On October 22nd, the Commission on Aging will have a meeting at 515 in the California Room at the Parks and Rec Department. On November 2nd, the Gulf City Council Youth Committee will meet at 6 p.m. in the City Hall Community Room, and that takes us to our next City Council meeting. Yes. Thank you. We do have a groundbreaking for the Lincoln Lincoln Way parking lot project on Monday, October 26th at 4 p.m. Um, kind of behind in the alley, not in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> in the street side. It's the at, at the lot. Help me out. The vacant lot. The vacant, the vacant lot. The vacant lot on the east side of Lincoln Way. It's right next to the uh, Super Tortas. There's a restaurant there in the end. Close to the sidewalk, then. Right kind by of. the sidewalk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. Uh, comments by staff. Start with the city manager. None for me. Any from council okay. staff? All right. Nope. No. Okay. Council members' uh, comments. Uh, Vice Mayor Payne. Attended the CERT exercise in Elk Grove. It was very impressive. Um, it's what happens if there's a disaster, how the agencies come together and they had, uh, for example, they even had a school bus turned over on its side with uh, people playing the part of, of injured people there and how they were rescued. But in, in attending that, it again brings back a concern I think many of us have that live in Galt is what happens if you live on the west side of the railroad tracks and we get cut off from all those agencies? And I'm hoping that in the back of everybody's mind, one of these days we're going to come up with a plan to um, address that issue. Um, 
We had our shop local cruise the 50s uh, last week, and I think it was very successful. Uh, the merchants and businesses really came out in support. Um, Save Mart, for example, donated pumpkins that we gave away to the kids. Uh, we had the cheerleaders. It was it was a good community thing, and the the biggest advantage of it was it was um, an exercise in unity. We had the Chamber of Commerce, we had the city, we had the business people. They all came out to celebrate the fact that someone had had enough faith in our community to invest in remodeling the old stop and shop center, and it looks great. And thank you, Greg, for moving that great big gold truck out of the way <laughs> that was pulling our atmosphere. So I'm, and Jason was there, made a speech, and the Chews, who are the owners, were very pleased. They said they've never had a city show that kind of appreciation, so we did some good PR work as well. Turned out great. Uh, today, um, we went to the county uh, supervisors meeting, and I can tell you, They've been working on their budget for weeks, and they still have weeks to go. And uh, we went there specifically to try to do what we could to save the Meals on Wheels program and senior nutrition, which is uh, being threatened because of budget problems. Uh, GALT went out in force. We had, I'd say, about one-third of those chambers full of GALT senior citizens. Yeah. And um, they... Uh, th the county supervisors decided to keep the status quo at this point with the Meals on Wheels and Senior Nutrition, uh, but they're going to revisit it in December, so we may be going back in force again. They're going to wait and see how all the other departments are able to cut back. Um, I think that's it for me. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Clarence? Uh, I mentioned I was back in Washington, D.C. Uh, about two weeks ago, and uh, a few interesting things going back there. Uh, one, I sat in on the House deliberations on the defense appropriations bill, and uh, there were some interesting side issues going on associated with some language tucked into that bill, that bill. so it was just kind of interesting to see how that gets done and how that worked. Um, went by Congressman Lundgren's office and checked in with them and just continued to thank them for their support and uh, we'll want to be, it's not too early, start thinking about next year and what we'll be doing. I met with Pete Evich as well and went over some things and also like to announce that the Evich family has one more member, uh, what was known as baby number five until baby number five arrived and so Peter Evich, fifth member of the family, is now healthy and mom and baby are home, so congratulations to them. Um, SACOG, we've continued to track the water issues going on in the state legislature and what they're trying to figure out in the water program and the governor and all the rest, so I just encourage anyone and everyone to really be aware of what's going on up at the state legislature. If you've never contacted your assembly member or your senator, now might be the time to do it for the first time ever because whatever they decide about those water issues will affect all of us for a very long time to come. And you can just kind of imagine what the balance of power, if you will, in the elected votes, north versus south, as far as our state, and the uh, influences are at play. And I think I mentioned last time, I would say it again, that the decisions about to be made aren't just water decisions, and those alone are enormous, and the effects on, for example, regional sanitation, depending on what's decided, their, their rates could skyrocket. But there are enormous land use decisions and effects on the owners of land near the water, um, and believe me, 99.999% of people would never even want to try to read the legislation and the language. But I can just tell you that there are very unintended consequences to people who own property near or around the Delta in general uh, that just would never imagine that what's going on right now would have the effects it could have. And uh, SACOG, the letter we sent, one of our biggest concerns is that the bodies, the authorities who are going to be put over that going into the future are very thin on local elected officials, uh, people from other parts of the state 
will be on these, these bodies making decisions, and much like we've gone with the regional board, people appointed to those decision bodies and with those authorities, there's no recourse. They're not accountable to anyone. They're not, you can't unelect them by not voting for them next time because you won't be voting to put them on there. They'll be appointed primarily. So it really has very long uh, effects, and is, I believe Mark Twain actually wasn't really, didn't really say this, but he's been quoted for a long time that he did, is that uh, whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting. And uh, you know, this state has been fighting over water rights since the gold rush, and nothing's going to change. Okay, thank you. Council Member Haynes. You know what? Um, it's late for me. I'm going to go ahead and pass tonight. Oh, now, wait a minute. Late for you. I, I sit in on these oh, meetings until 2 o'clock in the morning on the East Coast. You're not going to get any pity from us. <laughs> Uh, you're say I always have it's, sympathy it's for you, girl. 40, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> you got Jeez. four more hours. You got six hours to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving right along. Councilmember Meredith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, once again, as was stated, tomorrow night from 6 to 8, I'm hosting a town hall meeting called When the Paycheck Stops. There will be a representative from the United Way that will be there to talk about their services to the community and how we came up with this concept. Uh, for this this outline that he put together. SMUD will also be in attendance to talk about their programs that they offer to low-income residents. We did have a couple organizations that said that they're last minute, so that they're having a difficulty finding people to man their tables because of the flu. So apparently it struck the beautification committee as well as other organizations across the region. I wanted to give kudos to our Parks and Recreation Department I, I play co-ed softball on Thursday nights, and last week when the, the fields were just decimated by the uh, storm, I don't think anyone believed that we were actually going to play games last week out there, but the Parks and Rec Department did an amazing job getting those fields put back together, and all I heard from people showing up for the games was that they were expecting to come and leave because the fields were in bad shape, but our Parks and Rec staff did an amazing job to get it get it put together. So kudos, boys, for that. And that's really all I've got. Thank you. Just have a safe, happy Halloween to everyone out there. Yep. Good comment. Well, I attended uh, what I call my quarterly uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, luncheon, and I try to go to it quarterly. Uh, they had a, a speaker from uh, Walmart that spoke, and there was a few staff members there. Uh, I did in uh, was involved in the opening of the uh, shopping center, but Barbara, I really showed up for the classic cars. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Uh, I also attended the uh, CERT program training drill, uh, actually with Barbara, and it was going very well. Uh, they were, uh, you know, it, it started out as a local and went to a regional. It, there was a lot of time and effort. And I thought I had slid by because of my uh, part-time job until there was a chief officer that come up and said, you know, Shelton, what is your assignment? <laughs> I said, oh, no, I'm not working. <laughs> I'm just visiting. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I also went to uh, the County Board of Supervisors to show support and kind of figure out what we're going to do with the yeah. nutri nutrition program. So. Uh, I do have, uh, as I stated earlier, about the mayor's position. So I'm going to ask through uh, city uh, manager and assistant as uh, I'm asking uh, through, through you guys and staff to research uh, the question and a possible measure by council, shall the mayor be elected at large to serve a term for four years? And you can, I'll get with you later, and you can tell me when. You want us to bring back the process? I would like for the uh, uh, process and a staff report on what, what exactly we need to do. And at that time, I'll propose a question to council. I, can, I mean, I can't really go into detail and discuss it other than just give direction or ask for staff to do that right now. Okay. Other than that, I hope everyone just has a great week. If I could, Mr. May, I... Should have brought this up earlier. I apologize. Good. I wanted to give the council a chance. I want to uh, thank the members of the public works staff. Uh, we got through this last storm with little or no damage. We spent two or three weeks prior with a lot of cleanup 
and most people don't, aren't aware of it, but we had the power out at the treatment plant and the ECU lift station for over 24 hours. So my crew spent the entire night rotating three-hour shifts, manning both those stations all night long. And that's I think, a little bit above and beyond what we normally expect them to do. I really appreciate their efforts. Were they rowing? Thank you, Greg. So what we will do is uh, uh, our, we're not going to close the meeting. We're going to re-adjourn back into close because we still have the one item that we're still discussing.